I'd like to welcome everyone to WeLoveMetal.com. I am very pleased that I have Ralph Shapers on the phone, uh, straight from Germany. Um, of course, the legendary frontman of Primal Fear, a uh, massive band for our site, and uh, we have a lot of fans of them. And Ralph is uh, has a solo album out at the moment. How are you doing, Ralph? Absolutely fine, thank you. It's out today here in Europe, and uh, the reviews are great so far, and I'm really happy and pleased about it. Has there, uh, the response, uh, we just did a review on it, actually, and... Uh, I'll tell you, from top to bottom, there is no filler in that album. You did an amazing job on it. Um, has there been anything that surprised you by the, the reviews? I mean, they've all been so positive. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, they're here and there. The may, maybe too much the police talkings again, because, I mean, I've been, I've been somehow developing my own kind of thing over the years, and also um, it's not only my songs on it. It's all, we, we wrote the songs in the team. Apart from the fact that I covered the Judas Priest track, I think all the other tracks are, are quite... An old style nowadays. I would say I, d I didn't hear a lot of that, to be honest. I thought it was uh, very unique, really. Yeah. Um, how did the album come about, Ralph? Well, I've been collecting ideas, uh, you know, for many years now. And uh, some of them, of course, I offered for Prime of Fear as well. But some of them didn't make it on an album because we always have 20 to 25 tracks on, in a pool of songs for, for, for each album. And uh, we have a certain red thread and a certain, a certain red line, and sometimes some songs just don't fit, which doesn't mean that they're not good in quality. And so um, I use two of the tracks, for instance, on, on my album, is uh, Play With Fire and Dynasty. And all the other tracks were written around it. Uh, basically, I'm pretty much a ballad writer. I always sit there and shred the acoustic guitar and find my melodies, and, and it's, it's uh, basically very mellow lines and stuff. So... In the end, Matt, Magnus, Alex, Byrod, and also Sander Gomes from X After Forever, they helped me to put up uh, the whole thing a little bit more heavier in the end, which I also love and like because I grew up on it and I'm, I'm loving heavy metal, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, how do you feel it, for people, how do you feel it differs from your, your Primal Fear work? Well, there's much more a personal note in, in, in some songs. For instance, The Pain of the Accused or Compassion or Doomsday. Oh, you could really say those tracks would never appear somehow on a Primal Fear album uh, because I was exper experimenting a lot here at home in my home studio uh, have a, uh, it's not so hard anymore to have good gear at home it's, uh, it's affordable nowadays and also with the Pro Tools systems and stuff so I'm pleased to do everything here on my own and, and check out sounds and stuff and that's the way how I also composed the track um, Doomsday where I was it was 4am in the morning my boy was sleeping I had to be quiet so I had to to crank up the game from compressor and, and check out my low voice, and that's what we have in result now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, the Pain of the Accused, I, I absolutely adore that song, and, and Kai Hansen's on it from Gamma Ray. Um, obviously, you guys have stayed in touch throughout the years. It's been quite some time since you've been with them. Absolutely. We're still good friends. I mean, uh, we sorted out everything back then, all, already two months after I left uh, Gamma Ray, and, and we set ways, which is uh, talk like grown-up people to each other and, and stay in contact. Uh, I mean, three or four years later, I remember doing this, uh, uh, the Judas Priest cover of Excite for, for a Priest tribute uh, collection on a CD, and we wanted to show the people already there that we still get along good with, good with each other, because there's no reason to, to bitch about anything and to, to, to argue about anything anymore. And, uh, yeah, we came still are great friends, and when we see each other, we have some beers, and help each other out when, when uh, there's music to do. He helps me play, play in a solo for my album, for instance, now, and if he wants me to sing for Gamma Ray again, why not? Excellent. For a song or two. Now, along those same lines, um, obviously you've, you've had such an amazing career with Primal Fear, and I mean, you guys are huge all over the world, and a lot of bands can become paranoid when their, their frontman goes out and does a solo project, but Primal Fear actually helped you on this album, did they not? Exactly, yes. Um, it's not all members of Primal Fear. I mean, it would be odd to have everybody on it, then we could label it Primal Fear, of course, yeah. because, I mean, when I open my mouth, of, my mouth, of course, uh, it sounds like Primal Fear because I'm the vocalist of Primal Fear here and there, but, you know, also the writing team, Alex, Magnus, and, and, and Matt, because those people, I really trust them personally and also music-wise, of course, and, you know, they're doing so many other things as well. I mean, Alex is also doing the Voodoo Circle project, He's and Matt is doing Sinner as well, and... and also, Keith Kisamoville, and uh, you know, uh, 
Magnus is doing a lot with the Alan Lunder project and stuff, so those people can really write songs not only in one certain way of making music for, for like for Primal Fear, for instance, right? Definitely, and you, you played a lot of the instruments on this album, did you not? It's just for one track. I just uh, played Before the Dawn, the cover track of Priest. Uh, I played the acoustic guitar, the bass guitar on it, and I programmed also the MIDI files for, for the keyboards and stuff because I always liked that song from Judas Priest. It's, uh, it's not the typical Judas Priest track. It's a, it's a track with much feeling and much uh, passion in it, and I always loved to sing along with that track when I was a kid and, and still now. And as I'm aware of playing the acoustic guitar, I recorded it on my own. Uh, except the solo was recorded by Victor Smolsky from Rage. Mm. Amazing. Now, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've been around since about 83, is that correct? Yes, with recording albums, with vinyl albums with uh, Time Pace back then, but I started earlier, of course, in several bands where nobody will talk about or will hear about <laughs> it with school <laughs> bands and stuff and did the first baby steps and in rehearsing and rehearsing room, room with, with bands and stuff, you know. So I started with uh, 16, actually, when I was still also playing the guitar in the band and singing, singing. So what do you think the secret's been for you to stay relevant for all these years, Ralph? Well, pa of course, the passion for the music, the patience, and, yeah, I mean, if you, you became really addicted, you know, when, when, you, when you are on stage and people scream for you and cheer for you, this certain kind of vibe mixes up with the adrenaline in your blood, and you can't really describe it. It's a certain kind of drug you, you don't want to lose anymore, and, and I think I'm going to do this until I die. <laughs> <laughs> um, along those lines of, of, of your career and whatnot, it, doing a lot of research on you, you continuously get compared to uh, Ronnie James Dio, and I just want to get your thoughts on the honor of being in that category. I mean, I mean, this is just amazing to be compared to one of the one of the best in the, in the music world and stuff. The same thing, like I always say with Rob. I mean, I have no problem with that. Uh, but if they come to comparing me too close, that I want to be a clone or copy somebody, that's a little bit too personal. And I don't when I do this, I just uh, don't do this. I just open my mouth and, and sound like I sound. But be compared to one of the best, like Ronnie and Rob or whatever, is a great honor. And um, yeah, that's great. It's absolutely great. And uh, on back to this album, you uh, there's a duet on there with Tim Owens, Tim Ripper Owens, I guess people would say. Uh, y your voices blend so well together. Did you know that going in, or is it just something you wanted to try? No, we, I think I know that. I knew that before because, I mean, I listen to vocalists, and I, I hear the certain range and stuff. And, uh, yeah, and that's the reason why we colored the lyrics different on the, sh on the CD sheet, <laughs> that everybody can distinguish uh, our voices and uh, knows who is singing what. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great thing, and I'm happy that Tim did it. We uh, got to know him many years ago on a festival. We became good friends in the business, and uh, we were swapping email files and uh, email addresses, and, um, and then we stayed in touch. And he was he was uh, happy about uh, the fact of singing a duet with me, and he liked the track. That's the most important thing, that you like something, you know, otherwise uh, he wouldn't do it anyway. And it turned out really great. Yeah, it certainly made, it's one of the highlights of the album, for sure. Um, is there any thoughts on taking the project out on the road? At the moment, uh, I don't think about it, because we're really busy with Primal Fear now. We are about to leave to South America next Tuesday for one and a half weeks to play in Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and Brazil. And then we will come back and uh, keep composing new songs for the new album. We have four tracks together right now, and we will sit together in the team again, and we'll, we'll, we'll meet in the rehearsing room, and we write new stuff for the new album it's about time <laughs> and then we of course also head out to do some summer festival shows maybe not too much because it might harm a possible uh, tour in fall but we will see you know it's uh, always the change is pretty fast in this business any uh, chance of North American dates Ralph? maybe not in 2011 hopefully in 2012 and uh, because we always love to come there excellent well, I'll, I'm just going to wrap up. I have a question that uh, we ask to everyone, and uh, we'd love to get your take on it. It's, um, who would you love to share the stage with that you haven't had the opportunity to? Could be anybody, living or, or dead, past, present. Yeah, we talk about the dead, of course, of course, of 
called Ronnie. I mean, we met each other, so, but not, of course, in the same band, but uh, the same stage, and that was great. And uh, so far, I'm pretty happy of, of, of the guys I met in the business. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, it was, for instance, it was great to be on the same stage with uh, Ian Gillen just one month ago um, in the Rock Meets Classic event. He was, of course, uh, singing the lead stuff, and we did the choir stuff together with uh, uh, three girls, and I did some backup stuff for him, uh, like octaves or stuff, you know, like songs like Perfect Strangers and stuff. And it was just great, and it's, uh, I think there's a lot more to come, and it would be great to do that same thing with Rob, or maybe also with Klaus Meine, or Jeff Tate, wh whatever, all those those icons in metal, you know. It's certainly, yeah, definitely. Well, I want to thank you uh, from Canada, Ralph, for, uh, for doing this. We certainly appreciate it, and uh, I, I'm encouraging everyone to check out the new self-titled album, because it is simply amazing. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to promote it, man. Thank you very much. I'm happy. Take care. So take care as well. Talk to you soon, okay?